Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Justine Murphy, and this is Light Matters for July 2nd, 2014. On this week's show, MIT advances optogenetics research, magnetic fields control liquid crystals, a chemical compound brings a new wave of solar cells, and femtosecond lasers administer medications. MIT continues to make strides in optogenetics research, as shown in two recent studies. In research published in PLOS One, a team from the MIT McGovern Institute for Brain Research used optogenetics to explore the function of inhibitory interneurons in mice. The researchers engineered inhibitory spinal neurons to express the protein channel rhodopsin 2, which stimulates neural activity when exposed to blue light. Such light was shown at different points along the thoracic spine, allowing the researchers to observe the effects of neuron activation in greater detail. When the inhibitory neurons were activated in the freely moving mice, their hind legs were completely, but reversibly, immobilized. The researchers also found that activating inhibitory neurons had no effect on the transmission of sensory information from the limbs to the brain or on normal reflexes. In another recent study published in Nature Neuroscience, a different MIT team developed a new protein that is sensitive to red light and enables neurons to be manipulated non-invasively. This new protein opsin, called JAWS, allows a larger volume of tissue to be influenced simultaneously. The researchers were able to essentially shut down neuronal activity in the brains of mice using a light source outside the skull. The new technique was found to be as effective as existing neural silencers, which rely on invasive methods such as implanted optical fibers. This new non-invasive alternative is based on an MIT-engineered relative of a naturally occurring chloride ion. It is sensitive to red light, which has been shown to penetrate deeper into living tissue than blue or green light, and produces a strong photocurrent. Although additional testing is needed, the researchers say the new approach could lead to better, more effective treatment of epilepsy and other neurological disorders, as well as eye diseases like retinitis pigmentosa. A new technique that controls magnetically responsive liquid crystals could someday enhance signs, writing tablets, and billboards. Researchers at the University of California, Riverside, have created crystal nanorods that rotate and realign themselves parallel to nearby magnetic fields. The researchers used colloidal nanostructure synthesis to produce the magnetite nanorods, which can form liquid crystals. These also have the ability to respond strongly to even very weak magnetic fields. They can also form patterns to control the transmittance of polarized light in selected areas. This is not possible with commercial liquid crystals, according to the researchers. The new liquid crystals could be used in applications such as displays, optical modulation, and anti-counterfeiting efforts. The research is published in Nano Letters. Researchers from the Stevenson Institute for Renewable Energy at the University of Liverpool have found that magnesium chloride, which is found in tofu, bath salts, and de-icing solutions, may be able to produce cost-effective, efficient, and non-toxic solar cells. The researchers say that this could replace cadmium chloride, the toxic ingredient used often in solar cell technology, which is expensive to produce and requires extensive safety measures during solar cell manufacturing. Magnesium chloride, on the other hand, is extracted from seawater, making it much safer. It demonstrates energy efficiency similar to the toxic alternative, but is much less expensive to produce. Other inexpensively manufactured solar cells do exist, such as those based on thin films of insoluble cadmium telluride. But according to the researchers, these are less efficient, as they can convert just 2% or less of sunlight into energy. The research is published in Nature. Existing drug delivery procedures cannot solely target intended tissues or organs, but a team from the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology in Japan and the University of Otago in New Zealand has discovered a way to change that. They have developed a new system that uses femtosecond lasers and nanotechnology to enable targeted and controlled drug delivery. This presents new treatment possibilities for Parkinson's disease. The new technique relies on the precise timing and intensity of femtosecond lasers to control the release of dopamine, which does not function properly in those with Parkinson's disease. The researchers encapsulated dopamine in a liposome that was attached to a gold nanoparticle. The nanoparticle can absorb the laser pulse's energy and transfer it to the liposome, which then releases the dopamine. The amount of dopamine administered can be controlled by the laser's intensity. This new approach, which could eventually be used to treat other ailments as well, essentially mimics the brain's natural mechanism. Next, the researchers plan to test the new laser technique on living tissue and eventually on a live animal. The research is published in Scientific Reports. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. Email us with your questions or comments at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.